Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I am just bursting to tell today's story. It's a rhyming story. That's when two words sound alike. This is the story about Peter and Paul. One was quite big and the other quite small. Hey, Clarence, you're big. Why don't you be Peter? Sure, book girl. But who could be small? Oh, me. Pick me, book girl. I'm small. Okay, doorbell, you can be Paul. <laughs> so get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. <clears throat> this is a story about Peter and Paul. One was quite big and the other quite small. I'm big, large, and grand, Peter would say. When you see me coming, get out of my way. I'm small, said Paul. That's what I am. I'm teeny and tiny, not nearly so grand. Now Peter, the big one, was walking one day in his large, rather tall, rather big sort of way. And walking beside him was Paul, who was small. He would run, he would jump, but sometimes he'd fall. You're so tiny, so puny, so short and so squat. Why try to follow when you can't keep up? And there on the ground, little Paul, he did cry. Why am I small? He yelled up to the sky. Because that's what you are, it's what you should be, said a voice calling back past the top of the trees. Who are you? Asked Paul of the voice past the trees. I'm a genius sprite. Take your pick, if you please. Whatever you call me, it's no matter at all. I'm here because I heard your big cry to be tall. Oh, yes, shouted Paul. Make me tall, oh, yes, please. Make me taller than Peter. Show him not to tease. And with that, the sprite did what his magic could do. Paul started to grow, and he grew, and he grew. I'm bigger, I'm stronger than Peter, said Paul. I'll show him who can play. I'll show him who is small. Now Peter, the tall one, ran from small Paul. Only now, next to Paul, Peter was small. How does it feel to be smaller than me? Said Paul from way past the top of the trees. But the answer he got was not what he thought his brother would say now that he'd been caught. I was mean, it is true, said Peter to Paul. Not because I was big, but because you were small. When I was small, I was once, yes, it's true, I was teeny and tiny, much smaller than you. I got hugs, I could sleep any time of the day. No school, no work, lots of love, lots of play. Don't wish to be big, said Peter to Paul. It's great to be small, it's much better than tall. Paul thought and he thought, then he called to the sprite. Please make me small again. Brother Peter was right. I want to be small. I wish to be me. And like that, Paul shrunk down past the top of the trees. That is the story. It's over. It's true. Just be yourself. Be happy you're you. That was the best rhyming story ever, book girl. <gasps> but that's all the time we have for now. Well, thank you, Clarence, and thank you, Doorbell. <laughs> and we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. 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 Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I can't wait to tell today's story. It's a story about... Oh, my! What's wrong, book girl? I lost it. I had my story to tell, and then... Poof! It went away. I've lost my story, and everybody's waiting for me. Calm down, book girl. The best way to find something is to start at the beginning. Think hard, and then maybe you'll remember. Right. Okay, I think it had something to do with a number. But which one? I know. Let's ask Story Stuff. Hi, Story Stuff. Hello, book girl. Will you help me remember my story today? Well, I could try. Open me up and look inside. <laughs> There's nothing in here. Look harder, book girl. I feel something in here, and it tickles. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> Oh, wait! Oh, I think I, I see, see something. something! Mittens. Hmm. Mittens. That still doesn't help me remember my story. Maybe Mailbox will have something for me. Hi, Mailbox! Do you have something for me? Whoa! Oh. Uh, 
Nope, nothing's there. I'm stuck. <laughs> Don't be so sure. I have a delivery. But there was nothing in there just a moment ago. I said I have a delivery. Look again. Okay, here goes nothing. Whoa, oh, oh, careful. Hey, oh, thanks, oh. mailbox. It's a little kitten. Mitten, kitten, kitten, mitten. I remember, I remember. It's a story about three little kittens and their mittens. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Three little kittens lost their mittens, and they began to cry. Oh, Mother dear, see here, see here, our mittens we have lost. You lost your mittens, you naughty kittens. Now you shall have no pie. Well, no pie for the kittens? For kittens. Don't worry, Clarence, it's not over yet. Three little kittens found their mittens, and they began to sigh. Oh, Mother de dear, see here, see here, our mittens we have found. You found your mittens, you darling kittens. Now you shall have some pie. The end. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered my story. I'm so happy. I'm glad you remembered it too, Booka, but it's time to go. Okay. Well, thank you, Clarence, and thank you, Mailbox. And we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I think you're going to really like today's story. It has one of my favorite things in it. Ice cream. Well, I like ice cream. Me too, Clarence. Hey, book girl. Yeah, story stuff? Book girl, I think I have some things that might help your story. Look inside. Oh, let's have a peek. <laughs> oh, I think I see what you mean, Story Stuff. There's a hot dog, a banana, and an ice cream cone. Thanks, Story Stuff. <laughs> this is a story about a little boy named Nicholas and his trip to the zoo. Clarence, would you like to be the zookeeper? Sure, book girl. Mailbox, would you like to be Mr. Alligator? Well, all right, if you insist. Doorbell, would you like to be monkey? Oh, sure, book girl, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Great. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Nicholas. He loved to go to the zoo. And one day, he ran into the zookeeper, and the zookeeper said, Nicholas, I know how much you love the zoo. Would you like to help me feed the animals? Oh, yes, 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 I would love to help you feed the animal zookeeper and he gave him a hot dog a banana and an ice cream cone that ice cream cone sure looked good nope thought nicholas i am here to feed the animals and that is what i will do so he went along his way supper time nicholas called and he ran into an alligator hello mr alligator are you hungry I have a hot dog, a banana, and an ice cream cone. Oi, it's me. Give me the hot dog and be quick about it. Okay, alligator. So he opened his jaw and Nicholas threw in the hot dog and he snapped his shiny teeth shut. Supper time, called Nicholas. And he saw a little monkey in a tree. Hi, little monkey. Would you like a banana or an ice cream cone to eat? The banana, if you please. I live in the trees where the fruit grows. Fruit is what I eat. <laughs> so Nicholas threw the banana up into the tree, and the monkey ate happily. Supper time, called Nicholas again. But that was strange. Nobody answered. Supper time, he called again. Hmm. And then he saw the zookeeper. Zookeeper, zookeeper, I gave the alligator the hot dog because he eats meat. And I gave the monkey the banana because she eats fruit. But what animal eats ice cream? Nicholas, 
the ice cream is for you for doing such a good job feeding the animals. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, zookeeper. And he took a big lick of his ice cream cone, and it tastes better than usual because he really earned it. The end. <laughs> that was fun, book girl. But it's time to go. Oh, well, we will see you next, once upon a time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl. And this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time and i hope you're ready for a story because i am just bursting to tell one how are you today clarence i'm really excited book girl i love story time i'm in a great mood too how are you good now which story should i tell today which one which one oh boy this shelf is so high that i have to stretch up and up on my tippy toes i wish i was taller hey that reminds me of a story about someone who never wished she was taller. It's a story about a giraffe named Josephine. Do you know what a giraffe looks like? Hmm, maybe Mailbox can help us out. Hi, Mailbox. Do you think you could get us a giraffe? They do say giraffes. Yeah, I want to show everyone what a giraffe looks like. Very well, I'll see what I can do. Great. Now, while we're waiting, maybe we could draw a picture of a giraffe. A giraffe has four legs. One, two, three, four. And a body. And oh, what am I missing? Clarence, what else does a giraffe have? A very long neck, we'll go. <laughs> right, a very long neck. And that's not quite right yet. There's something else. What is it? Do you know? <gasps> right, spots. A giraffe has spots. Spots, 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 spots. I have a delivery. Great. No, not here, at the door. Oh, okay. <gasps> it's a giraffe. This is what a giraffe looks like. Thanks, mailbox. Don't mention it. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little giraffe named Josephine who was looking for a job. She wanted to drive a taxi, but the taxi driver said, huh, with a neck as long as yours, you'll never fit in the car. And he laughed and drove away. She wanted to work in an ice cream shop, but because of her long neck, she couldn't even fit in the door. Josephine was very sad. Excuse me. She looked up and saw a little man. I couldn't help but notice your very long neck. Please don't laugh at my long neck, said Josephine. I can't get a job because of it. Wait, I'm not here to laugh at your long neck. I'm here to offer you a job because of your long neck. <gasps> and the man gave her the job. And can you guess what it was? I bet you can. Josephine washes the windows on very tall buildings. The perfect job for Josephine, just the way she is. The end. It's time to go, book girl. Oh, that was fast. But don't worry, we'll be back. That's right. Thank you, Clarence. Thank you, Mailbox. And thank you, Doorbell. We will see you next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time. And I think you're going to love today's story. It's about a little girl who never knew what time it was. I know what time it is, book girl. It's story time. That's right, Clarence. Hey, and you are perfect to help me out with today's story. Who knows more about time than a clock? <laughs> So every time I say the word clock, I want you to ring your bell. Do you think you can do that for me? Sure, book girl. That sounds like fun. Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Chloe. 
Granny was a funny little girl because she never, ever knew what time it was. She would go to bed at lunchtime and wanted to play at bedtime. In the wintertime, she would go swimming, and in the summertime, she wore a big fuzzy coat. One morning, when the school bus came, she was still wearing her pajamas and holding her favorite teddy bear. Chloe, said her mother, don't you know what time it is? And Chloe thought, hmm, no, Mom, I don't know what time it is. So, for her birthday, Chloe was given a clock. Good, Clarence. <laughs> What's that? asked Chloe. That's a clock, said her dad. Every time it rings, it will tell you what time it is. Wow, said Chloe. I love my present. I'm going to take it everywhere I go. When it would ring, Chloe would ask, what time is it? And the clock would say, it's supper time. And for the first time ever, Chloe was ready when supper was ready. Then the clock would ring and Chloe would say, what time it is? And the clock would say, it's bedtime. And sure enough, the stars were twinkling in the sky and the moon was out and it was time for bed. Then one day, Chloe went to school and forgot her clock. Gotcha. And when it was time for lunch, Chloe was ready for lunch. And when it was time to go home, Chloe was ready to go home. And when it was time for bed, Chloe was ready for bed. Wait a minute, thought Chloe. I don't have my clock. And then she realized, I know what time it is. I've learned to tell the time. And she had the end. Hey, Clarence. How come you rang the bell? I didn't say clock. Because I know what time it is too, book girl. It's time to go. Oh, no. Well, we will see you the next Once Upon a Time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time. I'm so glad it's story time. And I have a silly one for you today. It's a funny story called a nursery rhyme. But I need some help first. Hi, story stuff. Do you have something for me today? I sure do, book girl. Reach inside, but don't tickle. <laughs> okay, here I go. Oh, I think I do see something. Oh, my. It's a mouse and an egg. Hmm, an egg and a mouse. I know a nursery rhyme about a mouse. Thanks, story stuff. Mailbox, will you hold this for me? All right. Oh, oh. Clarence, I want to tell a nursery rhyme about my little mouse. Do you think you can help me? Sure, book girl. As long as we have a story to tell, I'd be happy to help. Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. <laughs> the mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. That's such a silly little rhyme. Let's do it again. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. Oh, that's so much fun. Thank you, Clarence. <laughs> and thank you, Mr. Mouse. Rhymes are when two words sound the same. Can you think of a rhyme? Like, what about the word silly? What rhymes with silly? Silly, I know, silly Billy. Billy was silly. Here's another rhyme. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down, whoa, and broke his crown. And Jill came tumbling after. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Let's see who it is. 
Hyper girl, he's a rhyme you like. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses, all the king men can put Dumpty together again. Thank you! That was a silly rhyme! And it had an egg in it! And Story Stuff gave me an egg! Oh! Oh! Sorry, mailbox! No problem! Oh, careful! Oh! Oh! This could be Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Woo! All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. Oh, poor Humpty. Thanks, story stuff. Get the help, book girl. Sorry about Humpty. Me too. And thank you, mailbox. Well, don't mention it. That's all the time we have for today, book girl. But don't worry, because we'll be back. That's right. We will see you here at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. That's right. Bye-bye. 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 Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. time. But which story should I tell today? There are so many stories to tell. Which one? Which one? Hey, there's someone at the door. Maybe they'll have an idea of a story I can tell. Hi, book girl. Can you tell me a fairy tale about a princess? Thank you. That's a great idea. I love telling fairy tales. I'm going to tell a fairy tale about a princess named Lilibel. Clarence, would you like to be the prince from the north? Sure, book girl. Great. Mailbox, would you like to be the prince from the south? Well, no problem. You can be the prince from the east, doorbell. Sure, book girl. <laughs> and story stuff, would you like to be the prince from the west? A prince? That sounds like fun, book girl. Great. And I get to be Princess. Lillabelle. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a princess named Lillabelle. She lived in a faraway kingdom in a beautiful castle. It was time for Princess Lillabelle to get married. So word went out across the kingdom, and princes came from far and wide to win her heart. When they arrived, Princess Lillabelle stood before them. If we were to have a child, she said, what would you give to it? The prince from the north stood up and said, Princess, if you were to take me to be your husband, I would give our child riches, gold, and jewels. The prince from the south stood up and said, If you were to take me to be your husband, I would give our child great beauty, golden hair, and eyes as blue as the ocean. The prince from the east stood up and said, that's you, Doorbell. Oh, if you were to take me as your husband, I would give our child um, great knowledge. Our child would be the smartest child in the whole world. <laughs> the prince from the west was the last to speak. Princess Lillabelle stood before him. You have heard what the other princes have said. They have promised wealth and knowledge and beauty. What would you give our child if we had one? And the prince from the west thought for a moment. And then he said, <clears throat> If you were to take me to be your husband, I would give our child the gift of happiness. What is beauty and knowledge and money if there is no happiness? You are very wise, said Princess Lillabelle. You shall be my prince. Mwah! Oh, it sucks. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. The end. Fairy stories, thank you so much. But girl, it's time to go. Oh, but that's okay, Clarence, because we will be back. We will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> And this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. 
so come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time. Hey, Clarence! Hello, book girl! Which story should I tell today? Which one? Which one? Hey, I wonder if Story Stuff has any ideas. Hi, Story Stuff. Oh, sorry, book girl. I'm very sleepy today. Oh, well, sleepy or not, we need a story. It's story time. Let's have a look. Nope, doesn't no, seem to be anything in here. Wait a, Wait a minute. It's so it's small, it's small. easy to miss. Looks like a seed or something. I wonder what it could be. Hmm. Hey, there's someone at the door. Let's see if they have an idea for a story. Hi, book girl. Can you tell us a story about the princess and the pea? What a great idea. Hey, and that's what this is. It's a pea. So come over to my story room for the princess and the pea. Get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a prince who lived in a castle. He wanted to get married, but only a princess could marry a prince. And this prince had fallen in love with a servant girl. No son of mine shall ever marry a servant girl, said the queen. But I love her. It is she who I would like to marry, said the prince. And if I can find a way to prove that she is as delicate as a princess, will you let me marry her then? Very well, said the queen, but I will pick the test. And the queen picked the hardest test ever. She took a pea and slipped it underneath the mattress of the servant girl. You are not delicate enough to feel a pea underneath your mattress. Ha! You will never marry my son. Ha, ha, ha. The next day, the queen called for the servant girl to come and see her, and the prince was there too. You are here because my son wishes to marry you. I wish to marry him too, said the servant girl. He is my true love. And then it happened. The servant girl yawned. <gasps> A big, wide, sleepy head yawn. <gasps> I'm sorry, your majesty, but I couldn't sleep last night. My bed was so very uncomfortable, and when I looked to find out what was causing my discomfort, I found this. And there was the pea. <gasps> she has passed the test, said the prince. I will now marry my true love. And he did. The end. Oh, book girl, I really like stories with happy endings. Me too, Clarence. Wasn't that fun? Oh, no, book girl, time to go. Oh, well, that's okay, because we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time. What time is it, Clarence? It's story time, Book Girl. That's right. But which story should I tell? Maybe you have an idea. Hey, there's somebody at the door. Let's see if they have an idea for today's story. Hi, book girl. Can you tell me a story about animals? You bet I can. I have just the story about a big lion walking through the forest. Hey, story stuff, you're a lion. But I'm not very ferocious. That's okay. I think you can help me with today's story. Sure, book girl. Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a big lion walking through the forest, and he stepped on a big, sharp thorn. Roar! He roared, because stepping on a thorn hurts, even if you are the king of the beasts. Now, he tried to get it out, but he couldn't. Roar! Then he heard a little voice. You're making a lot of noise. Roar! Who dare speak to me? And out popped a little mouse. It was me speaking to you. You are making a lot of noise. 
Now the lion was used to being treated like the king of the beasts. Bow down to me and be quiet. I am the king of beasts and could eat you. I will not bow down to you and you will not eat me. This made the lion very angry. And he scooped up the little mouse and as the mouse got almost into his mouth up to his shiny lion teeth, he yelled, Stop! If you eat me, I will be nothing but a crumb to you. And then I won't be able to get the thorn out of your paw. You? Oh, could you, a little mouse, help me a great big lion? Well, I'm small, it's true. But have you tried to get the thorn out of your paw? The lion said nothing. I thought so. It's a job for somebody small, not somebody big. So if you let me go, I promise I won't run away. But I want you to promise that if I get the thorn out of your paw, that you call me the king of the beast. If you, little mouse, take the thorn from my paw after I could not, you truly would be the king of beasts. So the mouse hippity hops down to the paw with the thorn in it. And with his little teeth and his little paws, he pulls out the thorn. So, if somebody calls the king of a beast a lion, you can say that the real king of the beast is a teeny tiny mouse. The end. Wow, that was a great story, book girl, but it's time to go. That's okay, because we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time. And I hope you're ready for a story, because I am just bursting to tell one. How are you today, Clarence? I feel great, Book Girl, because it's story time. That's right. Now, which story should I tell? Which one? Hey, there's somebody at the door. Maybe they can help me find a story. Hi, Book Girl. I have a funny little nursery rhyme for you. It's called This Little Piggy. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy ate roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy cried wee, wee, wee all the way home. That gave me a great idea for a story. It's the story about three little pigs. Mailbox, would you like to be the big bad wolf? Now that's a role I could sink my face into. I knew you'd like that one. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. They were afraid of the big bad wolf, so they decided to build a house. Story stuff. Can I get some stuff for my story? Sure, book girl. Great. The first little pig decided to make a house of straw. The second little pig decided to make a house of sticks. And the third little pig made a house of stone. One night, the big bad wolf walked up to the house made of straw. And he said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll up and I'll bump and I'll blow your house in. So he took a deep breath and he blew the house in. And he swallowed up the little pig whole. The next day, he walked up to the house made of sticks and said, I'll up and I'll bump and I'll blow your house in. So he took a deep breath and he blew the house in. And he swallowed the second little pig whole. Then he walked up to the house made of stones and said, I'll up and I'll pop and I'll blow your house in. So he took a deep breath and he blew, but nothing happened. So he blew again, and nothing happened. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, but he puffed, until finally he burst. And out flew the two little pigs. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, I'm so happy that you're safe. Now we can build a house of straw, sticks, and stones and live happily ever after 
safe from the big bad wolf. The end. Wow, wasn't that a fun story? Thank you, Mailbox. No problem. That was a great story, Booko, but it's time to go. Oh, so soon? Well, that's okay, because we will be back for the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time. I'm so glad it's story time. How are you today, Clarence? I feel great, but girl, it's story time, and that's always the best time. That's right, Clarence, and I have a special surprise today. Oh, I love surprises. Tell us, but girl, what's the surprise? It's a game, a game that will help us learn our letters. And are you going to help me today, Story Stuff? I'm ready, book girl. Great. This is a jumble. It's a bunch of letters that are mixed up. And when we find each letter, it will spell out a secret word. <laughs> but I don't know how to spell, book girl. Well, that's okay, Doorbell. You can play along anyway. And so can you. When you know the letter, you and Doorbell can yell it out. Are you ready to begin, Story Stuff? Look inside, book girl, but so tickle. <laughs> so get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little ant. This little ant loved picnics. His favorite picnic food was a... Banana. Banana. Banana starts with the letter B. Hmm. Can you find the letter B? There it is, Booko. That's right, Clarence. This is the letter B. Are you ready to yell it out? What letter is this? B! That's right! <laughs> I heard you yell it out. B. So the little ant loved bananas, but in order to see them, he had to wear his glasses. These are the little ant's glasses. And they look like a, another letter. Do you know what letter they look like? They look like the letter O, but girl. That's right, Story Stuff. They do look like the letter O. And can you find the letter O in our jumble? Um, oh, book girl, is that the letter O? Yes, it is, Doorbell. This is the letter O. In fact, there are two O's side by side. I thought you didn't know your letters, Doorbell. Well, I'm trying, book girl, and this game makes it fun. <laughs> so the little ant loved bananas, but he didn't like his glasses. So one day, when he wasn't wearing his glasses, even though he knew he should, he went to get a banana, and instead, he picked up ketchup. <laughs> and ketchup starts with the letter K. Can you find the letter K? Oh, for goodness sakes, it's right there. That's right, Mailbox. This is the letter K. And this is our last letter, the letter K. And now it's time to find out what our magic word spells. B-O-O-K. B-O-O-K spells book. It spells book, book girl. And guess what? It's time to go. That's okay. We'll see you at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I am so glad it's story time. How are you today, Clarence? I'm just fine, Book Girl. Hey, why don't you tell us a story about the weather? What a great idea! Now, I could tell a story about a rainy day, or a sunny day, or a very cold day. Yippee! But I have an idea. You do, Doorbell? What's your idea? <laughs> well, push my nose and find out. But not too hard, please. <laughs> hey, that sounds like the wind. That gives me a great idea for a story. It's a story about a little boy and a very windy day. So can you help me with some wind sounds whenever I need them, Doorbell? 
Careful, girl. <laughs> Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named James. Now, when I say little, I don't just mean smaller than me, or smaller than you, or smaller than Clarence. No. James was so small that he lived inside a walnut shell. Besides being just about this small, he was like other little boys. He liked to play, and that sometimes meant getting into trouble. So one day, one very windy day, one very windy day, Oh, sorry! He decided he wanted to fly a kite, like the bigger kids in the playground. So, hey, sorry, Stuff, do you have something for me? Careful, girl, help yourself. But don't tickle. <laughs> Thanks, Story Stuff. So James decided to build his own tiny weeny kite. And he held onto the string and threw it up into the air. But it fell to the ground like a rock. So he let out more string. And he threw it up into the air and began to run and run as fast as his little legs would run. But still, the kite wouldn't fly. He began to get discouraged and he decided to walk home. But then, a big gust of wind blew, and the kite went up into the air, and James, not knowing that the wind was coming, was still hanging on. Oh, said James as the kite went higher and higher. Woo! So, if you hear the sound of the wind, remember, that it's just tiny little James still hanging on to his kite. The end. Wow, that was a really fun story, book girl. Wasn't it, Clarence? But oh. it kind of tired me out. <laughs> oh, and Doorbell, I couldn't have done it without your help. <laughs> Thanks, book girl. It was fun. Time to go, book girl. Oh, well, that's okay, because we will be back. Isn't that right, Clarence? That's right. We will see you next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time. And I hope you're ready for a story, because I, I can't wait to tell one. But which one should I tell, Clarence? I don't know, but go. Hmm. Hey, there's someone at the door. Maybe they'll have an idea for a story. Hi, book girl. Here's a song for you. It's called The Ants Go Marching. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching three by three, the little ones stop to climb a tree. And they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. Hurrah! Hurrah! That was a great rhyme! And it gave me a good idea for a story. Thank you. We're going to need to draw a picture, though, I think, for this one. So first we need a river. Whoop. Whoop. There's our river. And let's just draw a tree for fun. There we go. So, oh, I need something else for my story. Story stuff, do you have anything inside? Say, but girl, open me up and find out. Hey, there is something in here. It's an ant and a grasshopper. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was an ant and a grasshopper, and they met at the edge of a river. Good day, said the ant. Indeed, said the grasshopper. It's always a good day when you're a grasshopper. Why's that, asked the ant. Because I'm big and strong and I can jump really high. This was true. Compared to the little ant, the grasshopper was big and strong. For example, said the grasshopper, if I wanted to jump across this river, I could do it in one big jump. And that's exactly what he did. Boing! All the way across to the other side. The little ant was puzzled. Well, I don't like this grasshopper picking on me and laughing at me. 
So, what can I do? How can I get across the river? And he thought and he thought. And then he had an idea. So off the little ant went. Do you know what he's going to do, Clarence? Maybe he's going to build a bridge or maybe get a boat. That's a good idea. But he does something else. Do you want to find out what it is? Yeah, but girl, finish the story. Great. So the ant came back with all of his little ant friends. Ha <laughs> ha, what good are your friends, said the grasshopper. They're just as small as you are. But the ants linked hands, and they made a chain all the way across the river. And the ants stepped on their backs to cross to the other side. The end. So the little ant couldn't do it by himself. That's right, he needed his friends to help him. Just like you and Story Stuff helped me tell my stories. Thanks, Clarence, and thanks, Story Stuff. You're welcome, Bookle. But it's time to go. That's okay, because we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time! Now, today I would like to tell a nursery rhyme. But which one do I tell? There are so many! I might be able to help a girl push my nose, but not too hard, please. <laughs> okay, doorbell, here goes. <coughs> hey, that sounds like a monkey. I think I know a nursery rhyme about a monkey. Oh, that wasn't a monkey, book girl. It wasn't? Oh, I want to hear it again. Nah. Hey, I know what it is. It's a rocket ship. Oh, no, book girl. It's not a rocket ship either. Oh, well, I'm stumped. Maybe you know what it is. What does it sound like to you? Yell it out right now. An animal? But what kind of animal? Oh, I wish I had someone to help me. Hey, there's somebody at the door. Maybe they can help. Hi, book girl. I think I know what that sound is. It's a sheep. I think little Bo Peep is the nursery rhyme you are looking for. Of course it is. It's a sheep. <laughs> Thank you. And little Bo Peep is one of my favorite nursery rhymes. It goes like this. Little Bo Peep lost her sheep and didn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home wagging their tails behind them. <laughs> oh, thanks, Doorbell. Hey, book girl, I think I know a story about a sheep, too. Oh, well, why don't you tell it, Clarence? Really? Oh, I'd love to tell a nursery rhyme, book girl. They're so much fun. I want to help, too, book girl. I want to help, too. <laughs> well, you can do what you do best. <laughs> Make sheep noises. Yay! And once again, I'm let down. How typical. Oh, well, do you have something for us, Mailbox? Ask me nicely. What? Ask me nicely if I have a delivery. Oh, uh, do you have a delivery? Oh, it's a little sheep. Oh. Thank you, Mailbox. It's a lamb, book girl. A little baby sheep. Oh, and I think I know which nursery rhyme you're going to tell. It is... Mary had a little lamb. That's right. And I can be... Mary. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. Little lamb. Little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. That fleece was white as snow. I want to play too. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. Everywhere that Mary went, her sheep was sure to go. The end. Oh, nursery rhymes are so much fun to tell, aren't they, Clarence? Oh, it was great, book girl. Thanks. But uh-oh, I think it's time to go. Oh, that's okay. We'll have more nursery rhymes and more stories at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. 
so come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I am just bursting to tell today's story. Now, where should we begin? Hey, a story can be about anything, book girl, as long as we use our imagination. That's right, Clarence. And if you like to tell stories, you like to use your imagination. And if you like to use your imagination, well, you can make a story about anything. Here's how. I'm going to spin around three times, and whatever my hand touches, I'll make a story up about it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, hey, it's a monkey. <laughs> it's a little monkey. And I know the perfect story to tell. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little monkey. He lived up in a tree, and he loved to play, and he loved to eat, and most of all, he loved to laugh. <laughs> all the other animals didn't think much of the monkey. The elephant thought he was very smart, and she very slowly said to the monkey, Any animal that moves so quickly cannot be smart. I move slowly, and I take my time, and that is how serious thinking is done. Hmm. The alligator who lived in the river looked up at the monkey and said, I agree with the elephant. And besides, monkeys eat fruit. They don't eat meat. I eat nothing but meat, and I am big and strong. Anyone who eats fruit must be scrawny and weak. Oh, and the lion, the king of the jungle, sat in his throne. He looked up at the monkey and said, Listen to them laughing. Life is too serious to laugh all the time. I am the king of the jungle. You'll never hear me laughing. Oh, the other animals aren't very nice to the monkey book girl. Wait and see what happens, Doorbell. I think you're going to like how it turns out. One day, there was a big storm in the jungle. The lightning flashed and crashed, and the wind blew, and the rain fell. And the little monkey went up to his tree to take shelter, where he stayed warm and dry and had lots to eat. The elephant stood in the rain, thinking very slowly what to do. And the alligator had nothing to eat because all the animals had fled from the storm. He was hungry. And the king of the jungle, the lion, was far too serious to run away. So he sat in his throne and got wetter and wetter and meaner and meaner. And the little monkey sat up in his tree looking at all the other animals. And he did the only thing he could do. He laughed and laughed. <laughs> The end. That was a good story, Booker. The monkey sure had the last laugh. <laughs> That's right. And just remember, it all started with a little monkey and a lot of imagination. Time to go, Booker. That's okay, Clarence. We'll have more stories at the next Once Upon a Time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. But I'll have big dreams, and I will climb just as high as they will take me. No bird was going to tell Millie what to do. So she climbed higher and higher still. She climbed higher and higher until she came to the clouds. That's where the raindrops lived. Hello, raindrops, said Millie. But you're a little girl, said the raindrop. You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be on the ground. I may be a little girl, said Millie, but I have big dreams, and I will climb just as high as they will take me. And she did. She climbed higher and higher still. She got so high that the tower began to sway, and she couldn't even see the ground. Millie started to get scared. So she hopped off on the moon. And do you know what she found there? Millie found her mummy. Why, Millie, said Millie's mummy, what are you doing here? I built a tower, said Millie, because I have big dreams and I will climb just as high as they will take me. That's wonderful, said Millie's mummy. That was not what Millie thought her mummy would say. I have big dreams too, said Millie's mummy, and I will climb just as high as they will take me. So Millie and her mummy climbed the tower together, up and up to follow their dreams. The end. Well, that was a great fairy tale book, girl. Millie sure had big dreams, doesn't she? And dreams are what stories are all about.
Oh, that's no dream book girl. That means it's time to go. That's okay. We'll see you at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time. I'm going to look for a story on my shelves. I have so many stories, it's easy to forget some. <gasps> oh, no! What is it, Book Girl? It's my plant. Whoa, that doesn't look so good, Book Girl. It looks like a... I should have taken better care of it. It's a very special plant. It's special because it told me one of my very first stories. Well, now, look at it now. Oh, I have to give you some water. Story stuff, will you help me? Sure thing, but girl. Thanks. There, drink up, little one. You'll feel better in no time. Hey, why don't you tell the plant story, book girl? It might make you feel a little better. That's a great idea, Clarence. Let's give it a try. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, the earth was covered in plants. Nothing but plants. And they all looked the same. There was no reason to be different. Until one day, animals started to roam the earth. And they began to eat the plants. The plants couldn't run away. They could do nothing to stop being eaten. Until one little plant had an idea. Tell us the rest of the story, book girl. I want to know what happened. This little plant used all of its strength and concentrated and did something no other plant had ever done before. It made a flower, a tiny blue flower. When all the other plants saw the flower, they started to laugh. They laughed and laughed until a huge herd of animals started to eat them. They ate one after the other, and in a huge sea of green, they noticed a tiny speck of blue. They noticed the flower and said, This plant is different than the others. The other plants around here all look the same. We shouldn't eat the one that's different. And they didn't. Word spread from plant to plant. Other plants wanted to be different, too. So some grew tall and turned into trees, and some grew low and turned into moss, and some turned long and thin and grew into vines, all because of the first little plant and its tiny blue flower. The end. That's why I feel so bad, Doorbell. I should have taken care of it better. It sure is one important plant, Book Girl. But wait a minute. Look, Book Girl, look at the plant. Oh. Oh, it looks better already. Look, Clarence, a tiny blue flower just for me. I promise I will always take care of you and never forget your story. Neither will I, Book Girl, but it's time to go. That's okay. We'll be back for another Once Upon a Time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. <laughs> it's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time! <gasps> Do you feel that, Clarence? Feel what, Book Girl? It's in the air. It's an alphabet kind of day. I just love the alphabet. It's like telling all the stories that ever were and ever will be. Because stories are made up of words, and words are made up of letters, and... Oh, I just love them. I've been learning my letters, but Kyle, I know the whole alphabet. A, B, C, D, Wait a, a minute, Clarence. Hold on to that alphabet. It gives me a great idea for a game. Oh, book girl, I'm just learning my letters. I still get mixed up sometimes. Oh, that's okay, Doorbell. You don't have to know how to spell to play this game. It's a game about sounding out words. Oh, you mean like... C makes a C sound? Right. Or like uh, two O's make an O sound? Right. This is going to be fun. I'm going to write out a funny-looking word on the chalkboard, 
and you two have to guess what it is. Are you ready? Ready! Here is our funny looking word. Okay, Clarence, you start first. What does this look like? The first letter is A, and it sounds like A. Right! And what does this sound like? Uh, oh, wait, I know, I know. The second letter is B, but it sounds like B. Right, so let's put them both together. A, B. A, B. I figured it out. I know my letters. Wait, wait Mayor Mark. Apple. Please don't say it if you know it. You can give Clarence a clue, though. Oh, it's something red and shiny, and you might eat it. Right. Red and shiny? Apple? Oh, no. What's the last letter, book? Oh, come on, help me out. The last letter is L. Oh, I forgot what that sounds like, book girl. Oh. I know, book girl. Can I help Clarence? Of course you can, Doorbell. What does L sound like? Oh, the letter L sounds like O. <laughs> right. So, Clarence, let's put them all together. Uh, a sounds like? Oh. Uh, then P sounds like? P. And L sounds like? Apple. Uh, Apple. Uh, and remember the clue Mailbox gave us? It's red and shiny and you can eat it. Apple. 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 It's apple. Yay! You both got it. A. P. P L E. Apple. Apple! Isn't that a fun game? You can play at home, too. You can learn how to say words. Just ask your mommy or your daddy to make up a word, and you can guess what it is. You can even play with your friends. Oh, that's a fun game, book girl. Even though I'm only starting to learn my letters, I can still play and help Clarence. I'm glad you had fun, Doorbell. But I think it's almost time to go, isn't it, Clarence? Oh, yeah, I had so much fun playing, I almost forgot. Time to go! That's okay. We'll be back at the next Once Upon a Time for more fun in my special book. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! <laughs> a snake. It could be a whistling snake. <laughs> That's silly, book girl. I like it. I wonder what a whistling snake would do. Hmm. I wonder if we can make up a story about the whistling snake. Oh, that's silly, whistling snakes. There's no such thing as whistling snakes. Mailbox, this is a story all about wondering, and that means using your imagination. Now, I wonder what would happen if you helped out with this story. Oh, very well. One day there was a snake rolling across the grass, but he was not whistling. <laughs> okay, your turn. Doorbell? Um, so the snake came to the end of the road. I wonder how to get across to the other side, said the snake. There were cars going by, and the snake knew that it was not safe to cross the road. Okay, my turn. So, along came a... A turtle! I would like to cross the road, said the snake, but it's not safe. What could I do? Do what I do, said the turtle. Just whistle. And up pulled a taxi, and the turtle jumped onto the taxi, and it took him across the road to the other side. The snake liked that idea, so he puckered up and whistled, and sure enough, a taxi pulled up beside him, and he jumped aboard and went across the road to the other side, safe and sound. So, if you're walking along one day, and you happen to hear a whistle, it might not be the bird. It might be... Our friend, the whistling snake, trying to cross the road. The end. <laughs> that was a silly story. And it all happened because we were wondering. You can come up with a lot of fun stories when you wonder, book girl. That's right, Clarence. Isn't that right, Mailbox? <laughs> well, actually, I'm wondering what time it is. It's time to go, book girl. That's okay, Clarence. We'll be back at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.